Today's discussion is on carbamazepine, which is number 197 on the top 200 drugs by prescription volume as of 2019, and I'm going to start right after this. What is going on? My name is Abdul Bashawuth and welcome to another video and if this is your first time here and you want to learn about drugs, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss anything. Uh, the list of the top 200 drugs is coming from this website and this website gets uh, their information uh, from the US Department of Health and Human Services. At number 197 is carbamazepine. So carbamazepine is the generic name, the brand name is called Tegretol, uh, Tegretol XR, Equetrol, Carbatrol, Epitol. Uh, this drug was initially marketed, uh, the brand name, uh, Novartis, uh, March in 1968. Uh, according to GoodRx, you can get 60 tablets of the generic 200 milligram for about $23 brand which has a price tag of about $159. So let's look at carbamazepine. How does this drug work? It's widely debated but one major hypothesis is that carbamazepine it prevents sodium channel firing. Uh, one thing to note here is that about 30 percent of patients with epilepsy are resistant to this drug due to the variant genotype. So this drug is indicated uh, to treat bipolar 1 disorder, acute manic or mixed episodes. Uh, it's also indicated to treat epilepsy, partial, generalized and mixed types and it's also indicated to treat trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, this drug also has a non-FDA uses Two are uh, also known as off-label uses. Uh, it's used for agitation due to dementia. It can also be used to treat behavioral syndrome due to mental retard uh, retardation. Uh, so there are quite a few important things to note about this drug. So I'm going to go over these very important things. Uh, this drug has a black box warning regarding reports of life-threatening skin rashes including Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis uh, is usually abbreviated as TEN. Uh, scientists have found strong association of developing these serious skin infections with people who have HLA-B1502 uh, genetic makeup. And people with this genetic makeup are exclusively found in Asians. Uh, patients of Asian ancestry should be tested for the HLA-B1502 before starting carbamazepine. And if the result comes back positive, then they should only be treated with carbamazepine if the anticipated benefit will outweigh the risk. Uh, it also has a black box warning regarding aplastic anemia and agranulocytosis. Aplastic anemia is a rare condition in which the body stops producing enough new blood cells. Agranulocytosis is an acute condition involving a severe and dangerous leukopenia. Uh, leukopenia means lower, uh, lowered white blood count. Even though aplastic anemia and agranulocytosis risks are pretty low, these conditions can be fatal and therefore it's recommended for patients before starting this medication uh, to have blood tests done uh, to uh, use as a baseline and be monitored closely uh, while on carbamazepine. There is also another genetic uh, marker uh, is called HLA A3101 uh, which indicates a moderate risk of developing serious skin reactions uh, such as the Steven Jones syndrome and the TEN. Uh, so this HLA 
A3101 is expected to be uh, carriers by more than 15% of patients of Japanese uh, Native America, Southern Indian, such as Tamil Nadu, and some Arabic ancestry. Uh, it is also found in 10% in patients of Ham Chinese, Korean, European, Latin American, and other Indian ancestry, and up to 5% in African American and patients of Thai, Taiwanese, and Chinese Hong Kong ancestry. So again, if people have, uh, have this uh, genetic makeup, it means that there is a chance of developing these serious skin reactions and benefits and risks should be weighed in these patients before starting using carbamazepine. Uh, this drug also has a warning. It's not a black box warning, but it has a warning about suicidal behavior and ideation. Uh, it increases the risk of suicidal thoughts or behavior in patients taking these drugs for any indication. Uh, this drug can cause uh, serious fetal harm and should be avoided during pregnancy and it's also not recommended to be used while breastfeeding. And if a uh, mother is breastfeeding and is using this drug, then they will have to make a choice whether to stop breast, uh, breastfeeding or stop using the drug. Uh, this drug also interacts with a ton of other drugs, so make sure you tell your doctor and pharmacist all drugs you are taking, including over-the-counter. Uh, for the epilepsy indication, the dosage is usually 200 mg twice daily, but it can be increased though. You can go up. Uh, for the trigeminal neuralgia, the usual dose is 100 mg twice daily. <clears throat> So let's look at the diseases uh, this drug is approved for. We're just going to briefly look at the diseases now. Uh, so the number one disease that is approved for is the bipolar disorder. Uh, bipolar disorder, formerly called manic depression, is a mental health condition that causes extreme mood swings that include emotional highs or called mania or hypomania and lows, uh, which means it's depression. To manic highs. This is a common disease with more than 3 million US cases per year. And there are several types of bipolar and related disorders. Uh, they may include mania, hypomania, and depression. Symptoms can cause unpredictable changes in mood and behavior, resulting in significant distress and difficulty in life. Uh, let's look at the second indication for this drug, which is epilepsy, which is a brain disorder that happens uh, when certain nerves in the cells in the brain misfire. It causes seizures, which can affect your behavior or the way you see things around you for a short time. There are about a dozen types of epilepsy, and the type you have plays a role in which kind of seizures you may have. There are two main types of seizures, uh, focal seizures. Uh, these start in a particular part of your brain and their names are based on the part where they happen. They can cause both physical and emotional effects and make you feel, see, or hear things that aren't there. About 60% of people with epilepsy have this type of seizure, which is sometimes called a partial seizure. Sometimes the symptoms of a focal seizure can be mistaken for signs of mental illness or another kind of nerve disorder. Uh, the second type of seizure is called generalized seizures. These happen when nerve cells on both sides of your brain misfire. They can make you have uh, muscle spasms, blackout, or fall. Seizures aren't always an either or thing. Some people have seizures that start as one kind, then become another. And it's not easy to classify some of them. These are called unknown onset seizures, and they can cause both sensory and physical symptoms. <clears throat> and the last indication for carbamazepine, uh, the, the FDA-approved indication, is trigeminal neuralgia. So trigeminal neuralgia is a chronic pain condition that affects the trigeminal nerve which carries sensation from your face to your brain. 
if you have trigeminal neuralgia, even mild stimulation of your face, such as from brushing your teeth or putting on makeup, may trigger a jolt of excruciating pain. You may initially experience short, mild attacks, but trigeminal neuralgia can progress and cause longer, more frequent bouts of searing pain. Trigeminal neuralgia affects women more often than men, and it's more likely to occur in people who are older than 50. Because of the variety of treatment options available, having trigeminal neuralgia doesn't necessarily mean you are doomed to a life of pain. Doctors usually can effectively manage trigeminal neuralgia with medications, injections, or even surgery. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. If you want to learn more about drugs, how they work, their side effects, drug interactions, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.